Okay, we have another one. We want to find the exact value of sine negative 11 pi over 3 using reference angles and also we want to indicate the exact value. So exact value and reference angle. Another one where you have a negative angle. So again, we always want to take our anything that has a negative angle in it, we want to rewrite it with as a positive angle by using the even odd properties. Even odd property that applies to this problem is going to be this one. Sine of negative t equals negative sine t. Okay, that takes the negative angle and turns it into a uh, positive angle. In our case, we have negative 11 pi over 3. So I have sine of negative 11 pi over 3 is going to equal negative sine 11 pi over 3. So by doing that, I'm able to rewrite the negative angle as a positive angle. Now the 11 pi over 3, I want to figure out how many times 2 pi can divide into that. I already know it's more than 2 pi because the, the, the fraction 11 over 3 is more. Now if I take the fraction 11 over 3 and rewrite it as a mixed number, I'm going to go ahead and do that. 3 goes into 11, uh, it's going to go into that. If I, if I rewrite it, that's going to be this, this fraction right here. So I have, it's going to go in 3 times and I have 3 and 2 thirds. So 9 plus 2 gives you 11, that's 3 and 2 thirds. Now 3 and 2 thirds means that if I divide 2 pi into it, I know it will go in only one time. So because it goes in there once, what I'll do is I'm going to take 11 pi over 3 and I'm going to subtract 2 pi from it. That's how many revolutions I can remove away. So again, the, the reasoning on that, I have, if I have 3 and 2 thirds, that means that 2 is only going to go into that one time. If it was 4 or more, I could go in more times, but in this case, I can only take uh, 2 divides only in there once. So I'm going to do 11 pi over 3 minus 2 pi, and I'm going to multiply this by 3 over 3, and when I subtract that, I get 11 minus 6, that's 5 pi over 3 is what I end up with left over. Which means that I can take this right here, and I can rewrite that as negative sine 5 pi over 3. The extra revolution, I'm going to automatically eliminate that because I know that when you go around extra revolution, we don't need to worry about that. It takes us back to the same place we started from. So therefore, I'm going to change the whole entire problem only into this one right here. So all the work that I'm going to do for going through these three steps by finding the exact value and reference angle, I'm only going to use this right here. I'm just going to work with, in fact, I'm not even going to deal with the negative on the outside. I'm only going to do specifically sine of 5 pi over 3 is what I'll do with these three steps. Step number one, we want to find the reference angle. Now 5 pi over 3 is just slightly less than, than 6, which is going to be uh, 6 over 3. So 6 pi over 3 would be 2 pi. So I know I'm just slightly less than 2 pi, which means that I would have this drawn in the fourth quarter. Now, if you want to do the whole problem in terms of degrees like I did in the notes, that's perfectly fine. And we'd find out again that that's going to be in the fourth quarter. So because it is in the fourth quarter, my reference angle formula is going to be 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3. That's the formula because I'm in the fourth quadrant. That's the same thing as 360 minus theta. It was what I did previously in the notes. This corresponds to 300 degrees. Is the same thing I have right here. So 5 pi over 3, if you're not sure what quadrant it's in, you can always think of it in terms of degrees. That would be 300 degrees in the fourth quadrant. Now if I subtract this, keeping it all in radians, 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3, if I subtract that, I get pi over 3 left over. So pi over 3 is going to be the reference angle that I'm going to use for this particular problem. That's the answer to step number 1. Step number 2, I'm applying the trig function to the, the reference angle. The trig function I'm using is the original one in the problem was a sine. So I want to do sine of pi over 3. Okay, well if I, if I do that, that's going to be 60 degrees. So sine 60, the value is square root of 3 over 2. That's what I would get from the table, my table of trig values or my unit circle. I would get that, square root of 3 over 2. Step number 3, I need to apply the appropriate sign. Now, we already mentioned that we're in the fourth quadrant. If you do the all students take calculus, it would be, if I'm, if I'm talking about an angle that's drawn somewhere down here, which is what it would look like for this problem, all students take calculus. That means that ca the C and calculus represents cosine. So cosine is positive, everything else is going to be negative. That means that if I want to do sine of 5 pi over 3, that means that that's got to have a negative value. So I'm going to take the same number I got previously and I'm going to apply a 
negative sign to it. So that's negative root 3 over 2. But my original problem was this one here. I had a negative sign originally in my answer because it was a negative angle. I changed it into a positive angle. So if I want to do negative sign 5 pi over 3, which is the same as negative sine 11 pi over 3, which is the same as the original problem that we started with, that means I need to apply a negative to this. So I really have negative times negative root 3 over 2, so my answer is actually going to be positive in this case. It's going to be positive square root of 3 over 2. So you got to be really careful when you have these double negatives on this, uh, but that would be your, your final answer. So we broke the problem down. It was originally sine of negative 11 pi over, over 3. We changed it by using the even out properties to get this one. We have a negative on the outside. We, we saw that 11 pi over 3, if I subtract one revolution to it, that would take me down to 5 pi over 3, so therefore I could ignore the extra revolution and break the problem down into this one that's circled. These three steps I did for sine of 5 pi over 3 only. So I found the reference angle, I applied the trig function to that, the sine, the, the sine only, positive sine. I saw that because it's in the fourth quadrant, that angle I had, 5 pi over 3, I, I uh, had to put a negative sign next to it because all students take calculus means that in the fourth quadrant your sign has got to be negative, so I applied negative there. But the original problem we had had a negative in front, so that's why it changed it back into a positive. So I wanted to go through all those steps again because this one's probably one of the harder examples of this type. We had, a, we had an angle more than 360 and it was negative, so therefore I want to just review that to make sure you got that one.